In Creole Parametric, datum points have a number of different uses. And on this slide, I've listed a bunch of them. On the left-hand side, we have a number of different uses for datum points in part mode. For example, you could use them to create other datum features, like they could be the origin of a new coordinate system. You can create a curve through points. If you're creating a round, you can use a datum point to locate where you want a variable radius. For rounds and chamfers, you can use them to define stop transitions. You can also use them for locating holes using the on point method. They could be a depth reference for extrude features. If you want to shift a pattern over, you could use it as the alternate origin. Also for swept blends, you could use it to define blend control over the length of the feature. You can also use them to relocate the sketch plane for a variable section sweep, and you can also use them as references for trimming curves. On the assembly side, you could use datum points for different constraints. A coincident constraint for a point can end up being like the old point on line or point on curve constraints that were available in earlier versions of the software. If you're doing mechanism connections, you have a slot file or a connection, and you would use a point as defining one of the references in the component that's capable of moving. You can use them to define simulation measures. For example, if you are doing testing later on, you might want to create measures at the different locations where you'll have your strain gauges located. You can use them as seed points for meshes in order to make sure that you get elements at different locations. Also, if you're doing loads in simulation mode, if you want to apply a moment to a cylindrical surface, there is a method called total load at point. In behavioral modeling, you can use them to define field points, which I'll show in this demonstration. Manufacturing, they have a number of different uses as well. So, for example, you could use them as the entry and exit points for CNC toolpaths. So these are just a few of the different uses for datum points. Let's jump into Creo Parametric and see some of the different methods for creating these features. Here I am in Creo Parametric. To create datum points, we have a drop-down menu over here. There are a few different types in here. I'm going to start at the bottom, actually. And here we have something called a field point. And a field point is used in behavioral modeling for creating a special kind of analysis called a user-defined analysis. Let me go back to the Model tab, and I'm going to change this to uh, wireframe mode. And let's say that I want to measure the cross-sectional area of this swept blend along the length of the feature. I would need to create some construction geometry, but one thing that I'm interested in is analyzing it along the entire length of this curve going through the middle. In order to do that, I would use something called a field point. When I click on field point, we get a dialog box for defining it, and the reference can be either a curve or an edge or a surface. And when that analysis is performed in BMX for a user-defined analysis, it's going to analyze the measurement over all the different values for that field point. So for example, if I wanted to be on this curve, I'll, go, I'll select it. And that way we have the point on there. And the actual location doesn't matter because later on when I create some kind of analysis that uses this field point, it's going to evaluate over the entire length of that curve. All right, here I have a different part model open. Another way of creating datum points is by using a sketch. I'm going to go to my in graphics toolbar just to make sure that my point display is turned on. Now I'm going to select a surface, and then from the mini toolbar, I can choose to create a sketch. And I am in sketch mode. Let me take a look. I'm not sure if I have enough sketch references. Yes, I'm fully placed. That's good. Let's close out of here. And I'm going to go to a sketch view. And I'm not going to be particular about where I'm going to locate the points, but if you take a look on the ribbon in the sketching group, there is a point command in here. And this is going to create points that only exist within this particular sketch. Once I hit the check mark, I'm not going to see those points. But over in the datum group, we have a point command. 
I'm just going to locate a few different points in here at some different locations. And there's some dimensions in here. I'm going to leave them as weak dimensions for now and use the right mouse button to get to the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And I'll rotate my model and deselect the features. You can see the different datum points that were created at the locations that I selected. Probably one of the most common ways though that people create datum points is from the datum point command. I will click on it and here we get the dialog box and you can create an array of points. In other words, you can create multiple points located within this datum point feature. You don't have to use this for every single, if you, you, you're, you can create more than one point within this feature. So let's take a look at some of the different creation methods for creating datum points. First off, if I select a cylindrical or elliptical curve, by default, I'm going to get a point that's going to be located on that curve using a method called length ratio. What it does is it normalizes the length of that curve between zero at one end and one at the other end, and then you'll enter in some value between zero and one to locate the point. If I enter in a value of 0.5, I'm going to get a point that's located exactly halfway along the length of that particular reference. That's good, let's click the new point, and this time I'm going to select the edge, and instead of using length ratio, I could go to this drop-down list and change it to the real length, and here it's giving me a value of 29 and some change. I can change that value, let's say, to a value of 20, and if I want it measured from the other end of the curve, I could choose next end, and here it's showing me that, oh, that would actually be a value of 45 and some, I can change this to 20. Now I'm a length of 20 along this edge here. And one thing if you've used Creo Parametric, you've probably realized that the way that cylinders and circles are represented are as two half cylinders or two half circles. So that's good for that one. Let's choose new point again. Now I'll select one of those edges once more. And instead of choosing it to be on that particular particular edge, I could choose create a point at the center of that edge. So that is good and I have the different points created in here. By the way, a few other different things to note about this dialog box. If I go to the properties tab, this is the name of the feature that's going to appear in the model tree and I could rename it. I could call it my point array. Now, if I go back to the placement tab over here, I have the other different points in here. You can see that we have PNT4, PNT5, PNT6. Creo Parametric is giving them a name by default. Let me right click on one of the individual points and I can choose to rename this point and I'm going to call it center and hit the enter key. And that way you can change the names of the points located within this datum point feature. Now I will click the OK button, and I have those particular points created in the model. If you take a look in the model tree, here you can see point array. All right, that is good. Let us take a look at some other creation methods for defining a point. Let's say I want to create a point on this surface. Let's click on the datum point tool and I will pick the surface, and by default, I'm gonna get two offset reference handles. You could use this to drag what you want to dimension the point from. So for example, I could click and drag it and select this surface, and that's going to give me a dimension there. And then for the other reference, maybe I want to dimension it from this particular surface, and I get the corresponding dimension on there. And I could change the numbers if I want to, but that's good. That way I've located the point on that particular surface. Let's take a look at a, another method of doing that. And so let's click the new point command, which by the way, you can also get to from right mouse button. But let's say that I want to create a point on this surface. Instead of dragging my different handles, I can hold down the right mouse button and activate my offset references collector. And I'll dimension it from this surface and also dimension it from looking for some other reference. 
Yeah, let's dimension it, see if I can get, let's dimension it from this surface as well. So there I have the different dimensional values and you can change them. But one other thing to note about this is that instead of being on that particular surface, you can go to the drop down list and choose to do an offset. And now I can actually drag it so it is located dimensioned from those particular references that I selected, but also offset from the surface a given distance. Let's choose new point again. I'm going to select this straight edge over here. And just like we had before when we selected the cylindrical edge, you could choose to do a length ratio or use a real length in here. And again, if I use a value of 0.5, I'll end up getting the point located halfway along the length of that particular curve. Let's choose new point again. And we can also end up creating a point at the intersection of three references. Sometimes it might only take two references, other, other times three references. For example, let me turn on my datum axis display and I can choose to create a point at the intersection of this axis and hold down the control key and select this flat surface and that way I'm getting a point located there. If I had three surfaces that were orthogonal, I'm just checking real quick to see if I have that situation in this model, I could do that. Let me turn on my datum plane display, go to my layers, and make sure that my default datum planes are visible, and close that. Now I can choose for my new point. Let me hold down the right mouse button and activate my new point collector. Let's say that I want to I'm going to hit the repaint button just to make sure that my planes are no longer highlighted. Looks like those planes were on multiple layers. All right, there we go. I can create a datum point. I can say, hey, I want this point to be located at the intersection of this surface and then hold down the control key and select this datum plane. And right now the OK button is grayed out because I haven't selected enough references. I'll hold down control and select this datum point, datum plane as well. And that way we have enough references to locate it. And that way the OK button is now available in case I wanted to complete this particular feature. All right, that is good. Let me turn off my datum plane display. And again, you'll find just there are just a ton of different ways of creating datum points. So for example, I could select an existing datum point, like that datum point called center, and right now it's creating another point on top of it, but we could also choose to do an offset from that particular point. And for the offset, I can hold down the control key and select this particular surface. And so now it's going to be offset from that point normal to the surface using the distance that I specify inside of here. And by the way, that offset will also work for vertices as well. So for example, let me go over here and I can say, hey, let's, select, let's create a new point and I will select this vertex and change this on to an offset and then hold down the control key and that way my offset distance would be normal to that particular surface from that vertex. The next method that we'll take a look at is to project a point onto a plane or line. And for my reference, let's select this point over here. And for the on, from the on dropdown list, I'm going to change the method to project and then hold down the control key and select this flat surface. So now this point 13 that I'm creating is going to be projected from that particular point onto the surface. At this point, I'm going to click OK so that I can show you a few other different methods. And to reduce my screen clutter, let's turn off our datum axis display. And I'm going to hide those previous datum point features so they are not cluttering up my screen. And let's hide this sketch that also contains some different points. So for the next method that I'm going to show you, what we're going to do is we're going to create a 
a couple uh, numerous points on a surface, but to mention them from the same references. So let's create a datum point, and I'm going to select a bunch of different points on the surface. And what you'll notice is that I've got my offset references, but even though I'm not selecting anything, it's allowing me to go on to my next feature. But all the different points in here are highlighted, so all these points can end up using the same offset references. For simplicity, let me turn on my datum plane display. And now for my offset references, I clicked in the collector over here. You can also access the offset references from the right mouse button. And I can select this particular datum plane and then hold down the control key and select this one over here. And so now all those points are going to be dimensioned from those two references that I selected. So in that way you can have multiple points on a quilt or surface offset from the same references. And now I will click the OK button in order to create those different points. And for the next method that I am going to show you, let's show how we can offset from coordinate systems. And I'll turn on my coordinate system display. And so here I have my point coordinate system. And let's go back to the datum point. I'm going to create a second coordinate system in the model. Let me go back to point array over here and make it visible. And I'm going to create a coordinate system located at the point called center. Let's go to orientation. And I'm going to use this surface to determine the Z direction. And for my other reference, let's use this surface to determine why that's fine. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And so in this way, I've created a second coordinate system. Let's hide the point arrays that we no longer need in here. And so using these two different coordinate systems, I can create a new point using offset from a coordinate system. Let me show you how to do that. Let's click on the datum point command. And for the references, I'll select this coordinate system over here. Right now, it thinks that I want to be on that coordinate system. We could also choose offset. But for defining the offset, I need a second coordinate system. And when I hold down that coordinate system, now it allows me to define the offset type as being Cartesian, cylindrical, or spherical. So for example, I could choose cylindrical. And here we can plug in the values for R, theta, and Z. Or we could go to the simple Cartesian. And then we could say, hey, let's change the Z value to a value of 10. And so you'll notice that the interesting thing about this is that here I did an offset of 10. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it like 50, something big that you can see. You'll notice that the original coordinate system, that is the X direction, but the offset is being driven by this second coordinate system that I created. And in this particular case, the Z direction is up. And so that's why even though I'm offsetting from a coordinate system with X being up, my Z offset being up is going to determine where the new point is going to be located. And when you're using offset from a coordinate system, there are multiple different methods that you could use. So for example, let me go to a new point and let's turn on the datum axis display. And for the references, let me select this coordinate system that I created and then hold down the control key and select this particular axis and that way my offset value is going to be along the direction driven by that particular axis. And so when you're creating datum points that are offset from a coordinate system, you could also use edges, you could also use planes uh, in order to determine the direction in which you want those features to be created. Okay, that's good. Let's click the OK button. And for the next thing that I want to show you, I just want to show you that you can control how your datum points are being displayed in the model. If you go to File and then Options and Entity Display, here we have an option in here to show datum points as a cross, but instead you could use a dot to display them. And let me go over here and hit the Apply button. 
you know, notice now it uses a dot symbol. Instead, you could use something different like, hey, maybe I want to use a square. Let me hit that. Now I have a little square that's being used to represent them. If I hover my mouse over this, you can see that this corresponds to the config.pro option datum point symbol if you want to use something other than the default cross. That's good. Let's click the OK button. It's asking me, hey, do you want to save this in my config.pro file? No, I'm actually happy using the cross, but I just want to show you how it uses the points in here just for the sake of this demonstration. Another method for creating datum points is when you are in simulation mode. So for example, if I go to the applications command and then choose simulate, here I am in Creo Simulate. I'm going to scroll down and show you. Here we have the model tree. Let's say I go to the Refine Model tab and decide that, hey, I need to create a, another datum point in here for my analysis. Let me choose point, and I'll just use a standard method. Let's create it located on that edge right about there, and I will click the OK button. When I create a datum point here, in simulation mode this is actually going to be a simulation feature it's only available in this particular mode if i expand this junction box in my model tree you see that this is a simulation feature and it's point 25. that's good if i click the close button that point is no longer visible because it exists just on the simulation side let's go back to simulation applications simulate I'm in Creo Simulate, and if you take a look right here in a moment, there is the datum point again. So datum features that are created in simulate mode only exist in simulate unless you decide that you want to promote them. So for example, I have this point over here, and if I hold down the right mouse button, here I have a promote command. If I go to the refine model tab and also for datum, uh, we do have a promote command available from the overflow menu as well. But again, if I right click and choose to promote this feature, now it is located in the regular part of the model tree. When I close out of simulate, now I have that point available here because it has been promoted from a simulation feature to a standard modeling feature. And one last method to mention for creating datum points. When you are performing various analyses, you can create datum point features. For example, let me take a look at this model over here. I don't have a material signed. Let me assign a material. To do that, I'll go to Model Properties. That is a command that I use so often I have it added to my Quick Access Toolbar. You can also get to it from File, Prepare, Model Properties. And right now we have no material signed. I'm going to click the Change button and I'll use legacy materials and let's just grab steel and then we are going to assign it to the model and then click OK. Let's close the model properties dialog box and I'll go to the analysis tab. And let's say I'm calculating my mass properties. Here I have the dialog box. I'll click the preview button and here we can see that yep, here is the volume, surface area, density, mass, and we have a coordinate system that's displayed on the computer screen for the location of the center of gravity. If you have a module called BMX, which I do not have, uh, and you create this as a feature, then you go to the Feature tab. Here's where you can create various different parameters based on the measurement that's created. So for example, let's say I'm only interested in volume and mass, I can uncheck the option for surface area. If you do have BMX, you have the ability to create, as a result of this calculation, a coordinate system and or a point located at the center of mass. Again, I don't have that particular license. If I did though, I'd be able to create datum points using analysis features. And so there you have it, a number of different ways of creating your datum points in here, and including the field points, using the regular point command, creating sketches, and also performing different calculations. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. 
If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.